Good morning, great readers. This is gonna be our last week with this poster because like I said, this morning we are headed to intercession and then after intercession break for those two weeks, when you start coming into school or if you're still staying at home, we're gonna be diving into one of these genres explicitly, meaning that's all we're going to learn about for a really long time. So this was just our overview about good readers and exploring the different genres. And then when we come back from intercession, we're going to just pick one to stick with for a little while. So I'm super excited for that, but I'm going to leave it as a surprise. Can you think about though, which of the genres we've covered so far and which one is left? Let's go through them. We have fiction, nonfiction and poetry. So think in your brain. Have we learned about fiction? Yes or no? Yes. Fiction is fake. Remember we have realistic and fantasy. Some are more real than others which are like super fake but they're all fake when they're fiction and they tell you a story. There's characters in a setting acting out things that happen called events. Sometimes there's a problem and a solution, but we can check off fiction because we know all about that. We have nonfiction and poetry. Which one of those did we just finish? Nonfiction or poetry? It was poetry, you're right, because we talked about repetition, we talked about rhyming words, we talked about how we could act it out and do different motions like our gray squirrel poem. So that was poetry. We can check that off, which leaves nonfiction. And that's going to be our job for the rest of this week is just to take a look at nonfiction, knowing that we're going to come back to it later and do more with it. Okay. So if fiction is fake, nonfiction is not fake. It's something that gives us real true information. This is Miss Atwood's favorite genre because she likes to read about real people doing real things and she likes to learn about them. So think to yourself, do you like to learn things? Hmm. If you could read a book about anything that was going to teach you information so that your brain would know more about it, what would you read about? Hmm. Whisper to me, I want to learn about... Awesome. Hopefully we have some books in our awesome classroom library that teach you about that. We have a whole nonfiction section that I'm excited to share with you when you get back to school. But today's nonfiction books and the rest of this week okay, are all going to give you a sneak peek of the things we'll be doing in science this year. So we're going to spend today on one science thing that then we'll talk about for a whole big long time this year. And tomorrow I'll give you a sneak peek of a different one and a different one and a different one for the rest of this week because we have so many cool science things that we're going to experiment with and try things out with. And our first one has to do with force and motion. So remember a little bit about force and motion from kindergarten. It's the study of how things move, right? So you may have noticed that some of the books that I held up today have photographs that look like they were taken with a camera, right? Like this one shows real people going skydiving. So this book teaches you about gravity, right? And if I open it up, you can see more of those real pictures that someone would need to, you know, take with a camera. And this one is actually a drawing because it was so old. They didn't have cameras back then. Right? But that's just one way to be able to tell when it's a nonfiction book because it shows real things. Okay? Another way to tell that it's a nonfiction book is the front right here. We've got a table of contents, which usually lists all the different chapters and ideas and things that are going to be in it. So a fiction book sometimes just jumps right into the story. Once upon a time, there was a cat and a dog and a mouse and all this stuff. But nonfiction kind of gets your brain ready to read by giving you that table of contents to say, oh, we're going to learn about this and we're going to learn about that. And it makes a whole list of good stuff. So the same thing can be true in this book. We see a top spinning on the front cover. We see real people, right? Pictures taken with a camera. 
doing real things. And we even see things called a heading. Maybe you remember a heading from kindergarten. The words at the top of the page that tell what the whole page is going to be about and what you should be learning. Okay. Now some nonfiction books do have illustrations, which are what we call those pictures drawn by hand instead of taken with a camera. Okay, so just because a book has illustrations doesn't make it fiction. What it's about makes it fiction or nonfiction. So you have to check and make sure it's not trying to teach you something. So right away, I can tell this is trying to teach me something because it comes out with the word fun fact. That word fact is a clue to my brain that says, oh, that's real true information. That's what they want me to learn. A fact is something true for sure. They want me to teach you. Okay. So this one and this one, even though they have pictures in it, they have facts. Okay, and there's that heading again at the top telling you what this page is all about. Let's see if it has a table of contents. It does. So again, that list of the different things that you're going to read and learn about. So let's dig into one. Okay, all of these will be here for you when you come into school. If you're excited to learn about force and motion, we'll have them on display. But I really want to focus on this one because it had a lot of great pictures and a lot of great information. So one of the things that we're going to ask you to do with nonfiction books is specifically look at the pictures and think in your brain, what can this picture help me learn or know that maybe the author doesn't always say right in the words? Because that's the cool thing about pictures is they tell you even more than the words do. And nonfiction books do a really great job of showing you things in their pictures. Okay, So as you're listening to this book and learning a little bit about motion, I also want you to focus on the pictures okay, and how they can teach you just a little bit more. So I'm going to get close so that you can see them really good. It says, motion happens when something moves from place to place. The earth moves around the sun. People move while working and playing. Animals swim, fly, or walk from place to place. Machine parts move back and forth to do work. The heading says force. Nothing can move by itself. Things move when a force pushes or pulls them. A force changes the motion, speed, or direction of something. So look at how these boys, right, using the picture to help yourself understand what they're talking about, these boys are moving it by changing the direction. One is pushing it while the other is pulling it so that they're going in the same way. If this boy was pushing it and this one was pulling it, it would go in the opposite way. Over here it says, wind has force. The wind pushes on the sail of a sailboat and the boat then moves through the water. So maybe you never thought about how the wind can move things before, but that is a force. This one says speed. Speed is how fast something moves. Speed is measured by the amount of time something takes to move from place to place. More force makes things move faster. A hard push moves a toy car fast. A light push moves a toy car slowly. And you could try this at your house if you have a toy car. You could push it just boop, a little push and see how slow. And then you could give it a big push and see how fast. And remember that word fact down here. It says fun fact. The fastest airplane is the SR-71 Blackbird. It can fly up to 2,200 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. Miss Atwood, did you ever have to pull somebody over for going too fast? Oh, yeah. Miss Atwood was kind of in charge of making sure people didn't go too fast. Were you good at that job, Miss Atwood? I was. Did you like it? I hated giving out tickets, but I had to do what I had to do. Don't go too fast or Miss Atwood might get you. All right. Here we have friction. And this is the picture that I'm going to put on Seesaw, I think. I don't know. We'll have to see if we get a different, better one. But I want you to notice how the author is using this picture to explain to you how friction works. So it goes with the words, but it just gives you a really clear idea 
of what friction does when it has to do with a bike. Can you kind of see how this is a close-up of the wheel of a bike? If you have a bike at your house, you might have um, a way for you to see this up close in person. So friction is a force that slows objects down. Rubbing things together makes friction. Bicycle brakes use friction to slow down a bike. Rubber pads rub on the rim of a wheel. The friction between the pads and the rim stops the wheel. Okay, so again, look carefully and think about how the author is trying to show you what happens with the rim of the wheel and then the brake pad and the friction. You have action and reaction. Every motion creates an opposite action. People push back with their feet to walk forward. Paddles sweep water back to move a boat forward. That's kind of tricky that you have to push in the opposite direction in order to be able to move the way that you want to go. So like if I'm in my rolly chair, right, and I want to move in this direction, I have to use my feet to pull the ground in the other direction and push myself forward. If I want to move backwards, I have to use my feet to actually push forwards. So it's the opposite direction. I'm pulling and I'm pushing that helps you move. Isn't that tricky? It says rockets use action and reaction to fly. Blasts of hot gases push the space shuttle into space. So when the rocket wants to go up, it has to use the gases to push down. You see that? So shooting them in the opposite direction allows it to use that force and motion to go up. It says, fun fact, squids move forward and backward by squirting out jets of water. So if you've ever seen a squid move, right, it's got to whoop whoop and push the water so that it can go right it's pushing the water this way as it wants to move in the other way tricky almost done using motion people use machines with moving parts to do work mixers use motion to blend cake batter yum people also use motion to travel trains cars and airplanes quickly move people over long distances Think, have you ever been in a car, a train, or an airplane? Maybe you've been in more than one. Safety in motion. Moving fast can be dangerous. A sudden change of speed or direction can cause accidents. People should wear seat belts when riding in a car. Think if that's ever happened to you before where you had to stop really quick and your body wanted to keep moving forward but the car stopped. So you know, that sudden change caused you to keep going. Or if you went around like a turn, like on a roller coaster, right? And it twists back and forth. Wearing that seatbelt helps you stay in one place and keep you safe. People should protect themselves while playing. They should wear a helmet when in inline skating, which is like rollerblading. Pads also help to protect people from getting hurt. I bet you have a helmet at your house to help you stay safe. Last page, ready? It says, amazing but true. And that's really what nonfiction books are all about, trying to teach us things that are amazing but true. This says, the sailfish is the fastest fish in the ocean. The sailfish can swim up to 60 miles per hour. Its sail-like fin and long, thin body help it move fast. That end. So hopefully you learned something about force and motion from our nonfiction book, okay? If you didn't, that's okay because we are gonna spend more time on force and motion this year. And tomorrow I'm gonna teach you something different about a totally different science thing. And the next day and the next day and the next day. But on Seesaw, you're gonna see a picture of something, okay? Might be from this book, might be something that I went out and got from the internet, okay? But what I want you to do is use that picture to tell a piece of true information, a fact. What can you learn by looking at that picture? Because that's something that's so important to nonfiction books is using information and things that you see together. You guys rock this and I'm proud of you. I'll see you later.